My guest is not living his dream. He's loving the surprise he could never have imagined God had in store for him. Ryan Rempel has a wonderful story for us. He grew up in a godly home in Manitoba, but in your early teens, Ryan, you had your own idea of I did. where you'd find happiness. Yeah. Yeah, I, I spent uh, um, a good uh, close to 10 years trying to make myself happy with, uh, with anything but God and just uh, um, didn't really have that deep personal relationship with Jesus. And, and uh, so I had, uh, um, I had a God-shaped hole uh, that I needed to fill and uh, I tried filling it with everything I could um, other than God and uh, led me down some dark paths and things that I regret today. And, and, um, through yeah. your teens into your early 20s. Yeah. Praying parents, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want those parents at home who are still in the waiting room to, to take heart. You came yeah. to the conclusion that Jesus was the answer at the end of all this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a slow process. It was slowly chipping away things that did not need to be there. And so it wasn't this aha moment. It was just like, man, this is just not making me happy. Not working. And uh, so just starting to pursue God and, and see what he had in store for me, and it worked out. <laughs> well, you had an unusual, it seems to me, an unusual nudge from above about the direction you should move. Yeah. Prisons? I, yeah, I, prisons. <laughs> I, uh, I, I had this nudge. Um, I, I've always been fascinated with, with prisons, documentaries, shows, um, and, uh, and I just had this idea that it would be really neat to do something in a jail. And uh, um, the day after I had that thought at work, um, the bass player of a worship band that I was playing with um, phoned me and he said, we've been asked to uh, lead worship at Stony Mountain Penitentiary once a month. Would you be interested in doing that? And I thought, oh my goodness, God is so real. Wow. And that was the first time that I really felt that God was doing something in my life. He um, had your number. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool. I, I loved reading about how God worked as you shared your journey with these guys and, and how your thinking changed about the, the bad guys. Yeah, it's, uh, um, it just went from um, me being very judgmental about what these guys had done um, to a place of, man, these are just amazing guys that did bad things. and. Uh, Probably some of the things I did maybe should have landed me in there too. And so I was just able to really just connect with them and just, and just fell in love with the guys there and, and wanted to share my story and wanted to share that Jesus was real and that he could do something in their life. And uh, that was the start of my ministry journey. For a couple of years, you really were experiencing God as you yeah. shared your faith, your journey and your faith. Yeah. And I think the other thing, and just in these recent weeks, um, I don't know if I've ever been more impacted by the transformation in people's personalities hmm. uh, in, in their whole lives as a result of the Word of God. And that's what you saw, Ryan, yeah. in these guys. For sure. Yeah, it was, it was incredible to watch that transformation of them just getting it, just going that, oh my goodness, Jesus is real and, and I have a Father that loves me and uh, I can live for that. And it was, really, it was amazing to watch them respond. Now, all this would lead to you being absolutely miserable in your job at a point in life where you had a, a new house, yeah, a new baby, yeah, and you quit your job. Quit my job. Couldn't stand it. Quit with no real warning or, or talking to my, my wife much about it. Uh, it was just uh, an instantaneous decision at work one day where I just said enough. And, and you had left nothing to and, go to. No, scared to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But God. But God. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks uh, after I quit my job, I was just crying out for God to just provide me with an opportunity. And uh, my father-in-law was talking about uh, uh, just a ministry that he was involved with. And, and uh, without even really thinking about it, I just said, uh, um, I could work there. I could do that. And uh, long story short, a couple weeks later, I was the executive director of, uh, of a ministry. and. Uh, I didn't know what I got myself into again, <laughs> but I was excited. You really started with nothing, Ryan. Yeah. Talk about the favor of God on this launch. Yeah, I've never experienced anything like this before. When I started Give the Word, um, I went to a ministry called Equip Canada in British Columbia um, and asked, I knew the directors there and I asked them how to start 
um, a charity or a nonprofit. And they just said, well, Ryan, we already know you. We know your heart for what you want to do. Why don't you just come under the umbrella of Equip Canada and you can raise your funds through us and that way you'll have accountability. We'll have a board for you. And, uh, and so I, I started that journey with, with Equip Canada. And uh, my first week that I started the ministry, um, I started out of my car and my phone. And I went to an insurance company and uh, my father, that my father-in-law works for and, and uh, um, the owner of the company was there. And he just said, Ryan, I heard you're starting some kind of a new ministry. What's that all about? And so I told him and he goes, that's fantastic. Where's your office? And I said, you're looking at it. I got my phone in my car. <laughs> and, and he just goes, wow. Well, I need to do something for you then. I'm going to uh, donate um, an office and a warehouse space for you rent free uh, starting now to work out of. And I thought, oh my goodness, I haven't even prayed about this yet, and here I am <laughs> getting this provided for Before already. Before you call, I will answer. Yeah. That's what God says. Yeah, and uh, so I started working out of there, and I, and I contacted the Bible distributor that we wanted to get our resources from, and uh, um, I asked them, you know, what 10,000 Bibles would cost me? I wanted to start big. I said, I, I want to do this so bad, so let's start big. And, and so they gave me a quote of... Uh, it was about close to $8 per copy, and I thought, okay, i got to raise $80,000. Oh, my goodness. So they called me back a couple of days later, and they said, Ryan, we've been talking about what you want to do, and uh, we're on board, and so we're going to do something more, and we're going to bring that down to $2.38 a copy. Unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, our funds were raised within five days of that happening. Uh, unbelievable that we had almost $30,000 raised. And, Just like uh, that. You know, doesn't yeah. this really emphasize the priority of the Word of God in his heart. Yeah. He wants to get his Word into hearts. Now, last June, I was in Gulu, Uganda, visiting Reynold and Kathy Maines, their headquarters for World Embrace. What a wonderful work they're doing to foster unity yeah. in the body there. They had a, well, I think they actually shrunk their request when they contacted you. Yeah. Yeah, they had originally contacted me for 500 Bibles, and it all stemmed from uh, Reynold overhearing a conversation I was having about Give the Word in Winnipeg, and I handed him a Bible in our brochure, and, and then I get a call from him asking for 500 Bibles of hardcover NLT Bibles. and uh, Heavy. Yeah, heavy <laughs> and expensive. And uh, I originally had to say no, and later that day, we found out from a ministry in Saskatchewan that we were going to be donated 10,000 hardcover NLT outreach Bibles. Wow. Yeah. But then that's a heavy shipment. That's a heavy shipment. and uh, Costly. Yeah, very costly. And so although the Bibles were provided for, we still had to figure out how to get them to Uganda. And the next day I went to go see one of our donors and he hands me a check for 10 grand. And I thought I would just use some of that money to ship the Bibles. And he said, no. He said, I'm actually sending a container of farm equipment to Uganda this summer and I'll ship them for free. And it turns out where the shipment was going was only about an hour's drive from where Reynolds Ministry was. And it was just like, God just, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. It was absolutely incredible. Really? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Happy for them, happy for you. And what, what's the scope of this ministry today? How many Bibles are going where? We are currently donating about 50,000 Bibles a year, um, going all across Canada. Um, Did we say they're free to the recipient? That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah, we raise all the funds so that we can distribute these for free. And uh, so they go across Canada, they go into Latin America, missionaries working there. Um, we've done some overseas, but it just, it's just perpetually growing. And uh, we know that God's Word does not return void, and, and uh, He's fulfilling that promise. Ryan Rempel. Thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone, trusting God. Mm. Took, you, took you a little while to get there, but yep. you have been made up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you so much. And let us be reminded to give the word in whatever way God calls us to do just that.